100 years ago, there would have been a lot of places on Cape York that looked like this. It's so lovely and it's so clear. Um, it's open. And these are some of the preferred places that golden shouldered parrots like to nest. Nowadays, these open habitats have become um, overgrown with native trees and shrubs. It's obvious that we need to be opening up these systems and keep these tea trees in check. Thanks to 30 years of good science, we know exactly what to do in terms of management. And over the next couple of months, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be coming out into these areas and strategically restoring these uh, important breeding habitats so they, they look what, like they did 100 years ago. This week was a big milestone for the project because it was the, um, the permits are through uh, and it was the first time we were able to get um, Andy Lilly as the contractor and Jeff Messer who's the kind of advisor um, on site to really uh, investigate the problem. I was aware of what Steve was doing, I wanted to become involved. I didn't realise till I was on the ground he had just how threatened the species is. Yeah, dumped at the opportunity to be involved really. I love getting out into the environment. I love working with bush people, um, with productive farmers and graziers who want to work to, to recreate this, this habitat for um, endangered species. These habitats need fire to keep them open. The problem has become so advanced that no amount of hot fire is gonna solve the problem, is gonna kill enough trees. So what we need to do is a major reset, turn the clock back in a very short period of time. And to do that, we're looking at actually integrating a lot of tools with the fire regime to try and accomplish that quickly. Fortunately for this program, we had uh, FMC donated the grassland herbicide to use and Corteva AgriScience donated the other um, more selective herbicides for us to use as well. Grassland is very, very active on our key Melaleuca species um, and it will, it will remove slowly those woody species with minimal damage to the grass cover um, that's on the ground that we need both for the habitat for the birds when they're on the ground, the feeding sources for the birds, etc. It's basically just a blower, a backpack blower, and it has a hopper on top, and we've dedicated it to granular, and it's a very time efficient method of applying granular to herbicides. There's no two ways, it's a big job. So the machine we use gives us really, really even pellet distribution, uh, allows us to control really tightly where it goes, and to meet the requirements of the regional ecosystem permits and for, for things like keeping our distance away from water courses and retaining those mature trees. I was actually stoked how quickly we were moving with that because there's a lot to do here and in areas where it's going to be 100% knockdown, that's going to really maximise the amount of land. So this is very much just the trying techniques on a small scale, seeing where the problems are, um, seeing where things, some things might be better than others, and then working out how to do this over time then on a larger scale, if, if we can um, get the results that Steve's looking for to, to open this back out to the golden shouldered parrot. It'll be a good thing for the parrots in, in time, you know, in the next, um, you know, 12 months we should start seeing more open country and so hopefully by next breeding season the parrots will be nesting in more open country. <laughs>